Okay, we have our last speaker. We just got this loaded up. Um, this is Jasper Thibault from North Dakota State, um, and he's here to talk to us a little bit about phosphorus um, from distillers grains. So thank you for being here. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a soil fertility guy. I know very little about <coughs> livestock, but I think this distillers grain has always been an important issue to talk about, uh, both to farmers as well as those who are involved in livestock. So our objective actually was to determine if the distillers grains can be used as a source of phosphorus uh, to crops in North Dakota, specifically corn and wheat. So why investigate if we could use or we can use distillers grains as a source of fertilizer? Now the reasons for this, uh, we have high cost of storage by the ethanol plants. We have six ethanol plants I'm going to show you. High cost of storage uh, of distillers, wet distillers grains, or freight transport by the ethanol uh, uh, companies, uh, high disposal cost of excess uh, distillers grains, uh, nutrient cycling, this from the farmer's perspective, that nutrient cycling from field to ethanol is actually an attra attractive prospect for farmers, you know. So it's a f philosophical uh, advantage in that context. Interest from farmers as alternative source of uh, available P. Uh, it could also serve as a slow release fertilizer. And limited research has been done on this. So we have five main ethanol plants in the state. Uh, Blue Flint, Red Trail, and the three others. Now, we have been collecting uh, distillers grains from Tarleton for one year. We collected from uh, uh, Dakota Spirit Arc Energy to use as our, sources, as our source of uh, phosphorus. Now, how did this come about? About four years ago, we learned from farmers who live within the vicinity of uh, who farm within the vicinity of uh, Castleton. Uh, they were interested, there was excess of distillers grains available, and they could get this for free. And they wondered if they applied this to their fields, if their crops could benefit from that. Would the crops, if they apply this, would they have to apply inorganic fertilizer to improve on the performance of their crops? So the study began in 2015 uh, in the, uh, my write-up actually involved 2016 and uh, 2017 and 18, but I'll present results for both for, from 2015 to 2018. So our treatments were triple superphosphate as a reference in organic fertilizer. So we use uh, our condensed distiller soluble, wet distillers grains. We applied, we used uh, wheat and corn as our crops and applied our rates at 40 and 80 pounds, including uh, zero uh, check. Now in 2015, we did the study with corn. In 16, 17, and 18, we did the studies on wheat. Now one other treatment that we had was after we did the study in 2015, uh, 2015, where we applied distillers grains on the soil, we incorporated the distillers grains. So in 2007, 2016, uh, we had a couple of farmers who asked if this could be useful for them. These are no-till farmers. If this could be applicable in their situation, if they had access to distillers grains. So we decided to apply treatments uh, both on the surface as well as incorporated. So this, uh, this is uh, the product, this is what we got. Uh, our summer help helping us to weigh the, uh, collect the distillers grains weigh, and we did every application by hand on small plots. So this is what we had after application. This is this, uh, the syrup or the CDS, and this is where distillers grain. So this is uh, a research specialist incorporating 
On this side, this is 10 feet plot, uh, incorporating the wet distillers grain or the CDS, and then we leave this on the surface. Right here, this is after incorporation. This is as good as we could get to incorporate the CDS. And there, we are planting through our treatments. So what do we have as uh, analysis? So when we applied 40 pounds of the silas grains as a source of uh, phosphorus, we were applying a total of 300, for CDS, we were applying 300 gallons per acre. And uh, when we were applying in 2018, it was 270 gallons per acre. So when in 2000, and therefore, wet distillers grains, to apply 40 pounds, we were applying 1.2, 1.12 tons per acre of wet distillers grains. So to put it in context, uh, looking at what uh, Clint Jones uh, uh, published sometime, I think that was early 2000 or late 19, uh, 1990s, that the typical total nutrients of manure, oops, sorry, oops, are these values. So we have 15 to 25 percent, for 15 to 25 percent dry matter content, we had a total of, we have a range of 0.6 to 2.1 uh, percent of total N, dry weight. So comparing that to wet distillers grains, we're having about 5.9 and 5.1 in 2017 and 2018, just to give a, put this in context. So what results did we, we, did we get? In 2017, for a corn trial, uh, when we did contrast between check versus all our treatments, uh, we did not see different uh, significant effects of phosphorus. Um, when we look, compared TSP, anyway, we did uh, TSP versus CDS and uh, everything else. Uh, there were no significant effects of phosphorus, both for grain phosphorus content as well as yield. Now, when we looked at the phosphorus removal, we saw there was significant there was significant effect, and there were differences between the check versus everything else, as well as between triple superphosphate and condensed distiller solvents. <laughs> So looking at this, this is just a summary of the result. The yields, there were no differences between our three sources of phosphorus. But at a 90% uh, confidence level, we saw that we had more phosphorus removed when we applied CDS and WDG versus uh, the triple superphosphate. In 2017, again, looking at the wheat, there were no significant effects or differences between our triple superphosphate and our WDG, or distillers grains. Uh, there was an effect of phosphorus, actually, when we applied. Now, we looked at the grain protein. We saw that there were significant differences in grain protein content. And one of the, the reasons for for that, uh, looking at this, uh, the shape of our, our phosphorus, uh, the shape of our graphs, we see that actually grain protein declined when we applied TSP, CDS, and WDG. The main reason for that was simply because we increased, we improved our yields, and then due to dilution effect, grain protein uh, concentration, uh, grain protein was, was less. <coughs> So but the total protein actually was not necessarily less for this, just that we diluted the protein as we increased, we improved yields with this, uh, with our, our phosphorus applications. Now, this check, what does this check uh, constitute? The check constitutes, uh, the only difference between the check and say triple superphosphate is the fact that it did not receive phosphorus. But we applied urea as a source of nitrogen to the check so that we applied as much as, as high as 180 pounds of nitrogen, equivalent to 80 pounds of phosphorus with CDS. So when we applied CDS at 
80 pounds, for example, we applied almost 187 pounds of nitrogen. And that is the amount that we apply to the check as well as to the triple superphosphate. So nitrogen, we do not expect nitrogen to be limiting for our check plots. Except that when we did our quant studies in 2015, we could not apply the nitrogen up to the 120 20, uh, 20 pounds of phosphorus because the nitrogen was too high. But we applied amounts that we expected uh, nitrogen not to be limiting. So in 2018, we went into, oops, we went in to look at the, uh, an index of VIGO by collecting NDVI, the normalized difference vegetation index, which is just a reflectance, uh, reflectance of the canopy, uh, indicative of high biomass. And we saw that actually the, we had better biomass with their triple superphosphate than with the CDS and WDG. We believe that the reason for this was because as we applied urea as a source of nitrogen, that was available and it enhanced the biomass. Mm -hmm. So because of that enhancement, uh, we were seeing these differences in uh, Vigo. However, that did not translate to the final yield, uh, to yield differences based on what we saw with uh, the NDVI. So we had significant effect of phosphorus. When we looked at the yield differences, they were known. So differences were similar, um, yields were similar. Grain protein was much better with WDG than CDS and triple superphosphate. And we believe that this was due to the high, uh, at uh, 80 pounds of phosphorus, we applied slightly more nitrogen than we applied with TSP and CDS. So that was likely the cause of uh, uh, an enhanced grain protein relative to CDS and, and triple superphosphate. So looking at phosphorus removal, it was similar tier between the three. So looking back at uh, 2000 and looking at our 2016 results, uh, these are presented in the uh, last at the waste world uh, meet in, uh, in Raleigh. Uh, we had better yields with WDG compared to CDS and triple superphosphate uh, looking at our corn trial then. And for the uh, wheat trial, we had really low yields in, in that year. And we saw that we had better, better grain protein uh, better yield with uh, wet distillers grain as well as uh, better grain protein with wet distillers grain than triple superphosphate and condensed distiller syllables. So what are our conclusions? That distillers grains applied can be a really good source of phosphorus. Uh, wheat yields were similar between triple superphosphate and the distillers grains in 2017 and 18. But in 2015 and 16, uh, CDS for the corn trial and WDG for the corn and wheat trials in 2016 produced significantly greater yields than the triple superphosphate. Uh, we recognize major challenges uh, for farmers to use this as a source of phosphorus. One, because of the high cost of transportation. Two, very few farmers have the equipment to apply and uh, thirdly, they have to deal with the cost of WDG. When we started this four years ago, they could ac acquire this for free. And we believe that just those farmers that live within the vicinity, maybe 20 miles, 30 miles of ethanol plants can benefit from this. I have received calls from Missouri, from Mississippi, from South Dakota, from Kansas, uh, Nebraska not just from farmers, but also from s small ethanol producers that have excess of this syrup or the, the CDS, and they don't know what to do with it. So they are actually saying that they are trying to convince farmers that they could apply this if they have the capability, and they would probably not have any negative effects. So 
even though very few farmers, then we have several farmers in North Dakota who have called us for, for, for this. Uh, last two years ago, there was a plant that had uh, their drying facility was, was down. They had the sellers going to offer. Now, a couple of farmers called us and asked if they could apply, how much they could apply. So this was mainly to enlighten our farmers that if they have access to this, they can use as a source of phosphorus without fear. This is not actually to tell farmers that, or suggest, recommend, recommend to farmers that this you can use as a cheaper alternative maybe to inorganic fertilizers, unless you have access to these. Uh, there are also uh, farmers or contract workers who haul corn to the ethanol plants, who call and they said they will not want to drive with their, with their uh, uh, drive without uh, carrying something back you know, to their various localities. So these are things that actually they can, that explain why some people have interest in using uh, distillers grains as a source of as a source of phosphorus. So with this, I would like to thank uh, our Corn Council and uh, uh, North Dakota Agricultural Products Utilization Committee, as well as Charles and Ethanol for providing us with the products to apply. <coughs> with that, I would like to take questions. Thank you. Yes, please. I have one. So, did you notice like a pretty strong odor when you applied these? Yes, we did. Yeah. It wasn't very pleasant, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. yes, actually. And you know, the, the major problem, one very big problem with this is the storage, not for the farmers as well. You know, then the timing of uh, acquisition. If you acquire it uh, in fall, uh, you cannot conveniently store it until you apply in spring, you know. So, and I, I don't know, we have not done any studies to evaluate the effect of or compare fall application versus spring application, versus spring application. Mm -hmm. But in North Dakota, I would expect that release of the nutrients will be much slower if you are applying in fall. Yes, please. How would you scale this up for farmers to apply? I see that you did it by hand through your small plots. Yes. Um, since it is a low, only about 300 bushel, 300 gallons per acre, would you do that like a tanker? OK, uh, good question. Uh, there is a farmer who has done this with the wet distillers grains, applying it as mano. So he has a uh, composting facility, and uh, he was able to apply the wet distillers grain. But for the syrup, now we're looking at what about nine pounds per gallon density, uh, depending on uh, where where you get it. It it can be quite thick, so mixing with water would be necessary, and it is true that actually it would be easier. We tried this to, uh, last year. No, two years ago to apply, to dribble it, but it was we had some difficulties because it was plugging uh, the tubes. So, but with, for farmers, I think it would be different because they have much uh, bigger diameter of their uh, the outlets or the tubes that actually they use to dispense the product. Yes, application actually having the right application. Uh, Equipment is is a, is a challenge for the for the syrup. Any other questions? All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you much.